My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slay the Spire. Woo, turn that volume down a little on my end, not on your end, just on mine. Hello again, yeah. Eight, max HP to remove two cards. Well, that's a really good start for a possible infinite. Mm. All right, so we've got two midline rest, late shop, a two elites, one, of course, being... Mm. One, of course, being the Emerald Elite. Uh, but there's another path where I get an early shop, so that's a removal. I get an upgrade, space, upgrade, space, upgrade, elite, space, another shop. So if I want to go for an infinite, this is uh, this is not a bad time to consider it. Uh, it's worth noting that when I'm talking about going for an infinite, I am mainly talking about building a deck that can win the game in five or fewer cards, or rather with five or fewer cards in the master deck. The primary reason that I want to do that is because there is an achievement in the game that I have gotten before, but this is a new save file. No. Damn it. Nope, I'm sticking to my guns. We're going to get this done. Thankfully, I'm taking a lot of relatively easy fights really early on, so it shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Gotta be strike. Double defend isn't even gonna help me here enough. Because I still need to be able to kill next turn. I can only do 18 maximum damage in a single turn. That's with three strikes, or 17 with a bash and a strike. I'm more than happy to occasionally throw away a run just trying to go for the infinite. And it's mainly because I have to get it done sooner or later. Ooh, okay. Really good time to aggress here. Cool. Don't want any of those. I'm s like, the primary card that I'm looking for here will be Dropkick. Or Flash of Steel, but Flash of Steel is going to have to be found in a shop. Weaken me again. Damn. Because we're not including any non-base cards in the deck, this is actually getting really, really bad really quickly. I've got to save these potions for the elite fight at the end of the floor. Otherwise, it's entirely possible I don't even get through that elite fight. So 24 on each of the splits. You know, use the attack potion. Oh, look! We finally found a drop kick. Of course, we use Carnage, though. Okay, so the first upgrade has to hit Bash. Getting the extra, uh, an extra turn of Vulnerable there is going to be really, really powerful for us. Remove another card from the deck. Should be a defend this time. Then we'll upgrade a strike. Pick up another thing, then upgrade a strike, probably. Oh, look, it's a singing bowl. When adding cards to your deck, you may raise your max HP by two instead. I mean, that's going to be really good for us. Okay. It's going to be incredibly powerful for us, in fact. I kill next turn. 13, 13, 9. Literally exact. Beautiful. Red Skull, if your HP is out of below 50%, you have three additional strength. Cool. Some HP there as well. 12 cards being shuffled. No. Battle Trance will kill an infinite, so I don't want to pair that, even if this is Battle Trance. It was. Good thing I didn't. Trip is actually a good applicator. Applicator. Applier for vulnerability for a deck like this. We're almost certainly dead next floor. We're going to need like a really early pickup of Dropkick or something like that next floor. Being below half HP and getting the effect of the Red Skull here is obviously fantastic for us. But that doesn't mean that I necessarily have to force that out. 
Being below 50% HP will just come. Don't worry, it'll happen. Oh, there we go. And we're back above. Oh, God, really? All right. Extremely thin deck. No value cards in it, though. Okay, should be able to extremely easily put this enemy on the ground. Look a lot like that if I did. Okay, so now we get below half HP. I still have to be attacking, otherwise I will just lose eventually. Really? I wanted the other strike this turn. Would have been able to put the enemy on the ground. Is that true? Actually, I don't think I could have. So I can deal 36 this turn. The enemy in response will deal eight to me. Eight means that next turn I will have uh, crumbs, brain, Ryan, work, 14. 14 with the guaranteed defense. I double defend that turn and then I attack the turn after. There's no way we win here. Oh well. So I take three damage this turn. I'll attack. So we take six this turn. Now a single block, and then I can just double strike here. Stay alive. Uh huh. Go for the maximum impact there. So defense, double strike, wins. Defense bash does this as well. Okay, cool. We could win there. Feed's the only card here we can even take. I don't even want it, but better than not having it right now. We'll take Sozu so that we can always play most of the cards in our hand. Okay, so we need an early shop, and we are going to need to avoid elites. Early shop, elite. Early shop, elite. So, basically, I am stuck hoping that one of these question marks is a shop. Okay. So, if I can pick up something like a... Meat on the bone? Meat on the bone would be really powerful for us. Come on, relic. Come on, meat on the bone. That's a full heal. I'm actually possibly not in the market for that, courtesy of the red skull. Again, yes, there are a bunch of things that I could do to make this deck better. However, if I want to get the achievement minimalist, I can't include that many cards. And the only real strategy for minimalist is to have a deck that can go infinite. See, if I was actually lower HP here, this would be fine. I do want to use the feed for the kill here. Max HP is actually really important to us. So I'll be taking eight more damage this turn than I really want to. But it enables me to kill with the feed, which heals me by three, so I only have like a deficit of five there. Uh-uh. That's five more cards in the deck. That's that's just a loss of the thing that we're going for here. It's pretty important that we put that bird on the ground because we can't really spare extra attacks on it in many turns. Okay, so basically now we are forced to exclusively attack. That's okay. Okay. 
I'm almost certainly going to kill next turn, so I can save myself 8 HP here. Uh... Clash would be really good in this deck as well, actually. At the moment, but... Gotta remember. I have to keep the deck relatively thin so that I can pivot away from it at the very end. I waste that strike on the front line here because I'm definitely going to be using the feed to kill the back line of this turn. Okay. Ow, but now I'm below half HP. And I'm no longer vulnerable. Beautiful. Eighteen damage versus the twenty that they still had, so I couldn't kill there. I include that card because I'm certain that I will die without it. I'm going to take the risky bet here because, yeah, we lose the bet, but it really feels like we need some luck to go our way here. Molten Egg, whenever you're going to attack to your deck, upgrade it. If we can just get Drop Kick and... Oh, no, we're almost certainly dead in this fight. Pretty definitely. Uh, if we can just get Drop Kick and Flash of Steel in the next store, we win. However, that's eh, not going to happen. Thank you, Snake Plant. It is remarkable that we have seen no Drop Kicks this entire time. Game, please. You must offer me the drop kicks so I can utilize the drop kicks to lay waste to my enemies here on the spine. Okay. At this rate, it should be relatively simple. My Mystic. Hello. Yeah, we still haven't even found it. This sucks. Uh, well, taking Lee's Waffle is a full heal here, as well as 7 max HP. So we'll take that and then just continue on. There's no way this comes together on the final floor. That's just not... Frankly, it's just not viable. Okay, we're taking a little damage here. Like, I would have to include two drop kicks, or a drop kick and a dual wield. Uh, or a drop kick and a flash of steel, or a flash of steel and a dual wield, and then I'd need to cut six cards from my deck on the final floor. That just isn't happening. So if that's literally impossible, and it is, uh, maybe I should just consider starting to add some cards to this deck. I have no strength in the entire deck, so Sword Boomerang isn't great here. I only have strength when I'm on super low HP, which is a bad contingency to be planning around. Or a bad contingency around which to plan. To be planning, wrong. Sure. I'll wait until my vulnerability is worn off before I start really going ham here. I 
Having a thin deck of ultra upgraded cards is pretty good. It means my card quality is really nice. Unfortunately, a lot of them are starter cards. Like if I had other cards in the deck, if I had have included those on the first floor, uh -hum -hum, then this would be a lot nicer. Down goes you. Hello to... It's too late to pick up a cleave. We'll take a shrug it off. Then we want to upgrade each of them. Really trying to make you vulnerable here. So this is going to be a really interesting fight. Interesting in that... Oh, you took my... Damn it. Uh, one sec while I find a way to justify what I just said. Interesting in that we're not really going to be defending against the later hits. It becomes a damage race later on for us here. But we have a bunch of max HP and we get more powerful as our HP gets lower, so. No, it could work out for us still. Hey, managed to get vulnerability on the enemy, and now they're hitting us for a giant attack. Uh Well, we have literally all of our defense in hand, so sure, we'll give it a go. We do get below half HP now. Okay. This deck doesn't really have the aggression to get through the rest of that HP here. So I'm kind of just alternating attacking and defending. Which is going to work fine until the enemy does their next hyper beam. If I was attacking the entire time, I'd already be dead. Oh well. We gave it a go. I, I'm i more than happy to hold on to the possibility of getting the Minimalist for that long. Uh, let me just show you, by the way. Uh, where are we? Have three or fewer cards in hand, draw, and discard pile combined. Okay, so that's, that's entirely possible. Not in an infinite, but you just... Burn your entire deck with a fiend fire. Not difficult. Uh, where are we looking for? There we go. Beat the game with a five card deck or smaller minimalist. You can also in unlock infinity at the same time pretty damn easily. Play 25 cards in a single turn. Uh, you are nothing. Defeat a boss on turn one. Also really easy to get along with those. The problem is as we continue ascending the ranks of ascension here... Ascending the ranks of Ascension. Uh, ascending Ascension. As we continue to do that, those kinds of things become wildly less likely. How many elites can I get this floor? One, two, one, two, three. So I can get three if I go on this right path. Oh, I can get three on the left path as well. Hang on. Which has more upgrades? Three on the left. Three on the right. Late shop versus early shop. Better with early shop. I will take the bludgeon and then we're going to veer off to the left here. This also gets me the emerald elite on floor one. So one of the big reasons that I want to take this path is because I know that I have a upgrade before I go to my first elite. So I can upgrade that bludgeon to be 42 damage. Clothesline here as well. That's a good opening turn. When they're both attacking, it, it can just be really harsh. Demon form? No. We have singular large attacks. Demon form doesn't really synergize with those. If I find enlightenment here... Whew, okay. If I found enlightenment here, I would have been real mad about it. Okay, so because we have two more impressive attacks than our base deck, we'll remove an attack. Pretty easy judgment there.
Couldn't kill this turn, but... Virtually guaranteed this turn. We're going to keep the deck relatively thin, so taking par through here feels like a bad idea. Lose 71, definitely. Toxic Egg, when I made a skill card to your deck, upgrade it. Hell yeah. It's going to mean a lot of our deck is upgraded. Getting that this early. So I can bludgeon just to kill that sentry, but then the problem becomes next turn I take 20 damage. Well, but I'll take 10 this turn and then 10 next turn. It's fine. Offsetting them puts me in a better position to balance out things by playing two defense and a strike or something like that. All right, I'm going to bet that I'm a little bit lucky here and bet that that backline of sentry dies to a draw of... Nope. Damn it. Let's hope I don't draw the bludgeon this turn, then. Oh, well. That means the two strikes that I used on the front line there were misplaced, effectively. It might not matter if I just draw bludgeon again really soon. Yeah. Okay, it made no impact. Although bludgeon did. Lantern, start each combat with an additional energy as well as a pre-upgraded flame barrier. We already have a lot of damage in the deck courtesy of that fiend fire, so I'm more than happy to take a defensive card. Upgrading this bash is going to make it really easy to uh, drop a... Oh, Pandia broke tenth. every 10th attack you play deals double damage. Nice. Uh, it's going to make it really easy to drop a giant bludgeon on an enemy. Yep, next turn we just kill with a single bludgeon. So we take six damage this combat and then dunk him. Thread a needle. Start each combat with four plated armor as well as exhume. What would I exhume in this deck? Nothing. Take a disarm. Just a nice defensive disarm right there. Upgrade the clothesline so we've got these status effects for a little bit longer. The only responsible thing to do here is take no damage. Now, unfortunately, the pen nib is queued up for the next attack, which means that I will be... Actually, you know what? I'm going to slow play this so that I can try and get closer to my next pen nib. If I can queue up my next pen nib to happen during the fight at the end of this floor, that's absolutely perfect for us. Seeing Red actually has a place in this deck right now, just because we have 3-2-2-2. Two, two, two. So in the first shuffle, seeing Red's actually quite effective. Uh, taking Havoc there and burning out our most powerful cards in the deck, to me, seems like it might be a poor idea. I've already cut a strike. I don't take the perfected strike as a result of that. Warcry pre-upgraded. Nice. Just take it. Right. No, I was going to be defending that turn. That's why I used the... Damn it. Ah, well. Thankfully, we did get the flame barrier this turn. Let's use Warcry just to tutor our hand a little. I'll put a defend in my next stand because I might just need to stall next turn. We're not going to be able to line up this pen nib in the way that I wanted, unfortunately. Gremlin Horn. Whenever an enemy dies, gain an energy and draw a card as well as an offering. That's ridiculous. That's actually... In Good lord. I'm going to recall and take my ruby key really early here. Vulnerability. It's the vulnerability. Yep. Yeah. 
fine with taking damage. Find me this bludgeon. Cool. Well, actually, no, we can't strike before the bludgeon. Of course, we don't have the energy for it. Okay. So we have to bludgeon the back line. And then I'm going to hold off before I use the pandib. I'm going to use one of my other upgraded attacks to do this. Come on, bludgeon. Come on, bludgeon. Well, now it has to be in the final hand here. And another bludgeon snagawa. Oh, damn it. That's what happens when I try and call things. Uh, we'll probably just take the astrolabe here upon pick up transform three cards and then upgrade them. Yeah. Basic strikes are lame for this. Wow. Two pre-upgraded immolates. That provides us a lot of the AoE we need to explore. And then whirlwind, just in case we haven't got enough. Uh, we've got really, really powerful cards. We don't have the energy to farm them. We do have Seeing Red, which I'm very glad I picked up in retrospect. Uh, and we also have Offering, which I'm also really glad I picked up, but I was always going to pick that up. So pretty much, if something offers us energy, we are going to be considering it much more highly than we otherwise might. Vulnerability? Three damage here, and then... Kill this stone. One extra energy. Just one extra energy puts us so far ahead right now. On bludgeon. No, I'll do it in two attacks so that I can queue up the next pen nib. Sure. Just remove a strike. Yeah, more than happy to take the max HP and a relic. We get blue candle. Unplayable curse cards can now be played. When we play a curse, lose one HP and exhaust it. All right. So AOE cards we're looking for here. There's one. That's actually full defense that turn as well, by the way. We'll uh, refrain from using Offering here. We don't need to lose six more HP this fight. We already have the kill. Turn up, you can no longer become frail. Eh, it doesn't really matter to us. Uh, Shockwave, apply five weak and vulnerable to all enemies. If it was easier to play, if we had extra energy, yes, but we don't, so no. Obviously hit the upgrade on that bludgeon. AoE cards? AoE cards! Other immolate? No. However... That'll do. Ancient tea set. Yes. Whenever you enter a rest site, start the next combat with two extra energy. Extremely important for us. Wildly important. Right. Do I want to go for a shop or another rest? Rests actually don't mean that much to us, so shop. But if I stone, whenever you play a power, heal for two HP. No. We have no powers in the deck. It's very unlikely that's ever useful for us. One, two, three. Signing up for the next pen nib there. 
Oh, yes. Necronomicon, 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 Nilri's Codex. The end of your turn. Uh, da -da -da. You may shuffle one of three random cards into your draw pile. Obviously, Enlightenment is the card I was looking for in this slot. Didn't find it, though. Heal 2 HP when you enter a fight is actually still kind of useful for us. If we could have enemies start the fight with vulnerability, that would be so, so incredible. Actually, he's just going to bash here. Use the whirlwind just to increment the pen nib. The enemy dies. What a lightning upon pick up choose a skill started to come up with it. Card in your opening hand. We'll definitely put that on offering. Can't use any of those. Not effectively, at least. I've been saving these essences of steel because 12 plated armor in a combat because of the thread and needle and the two essences of steel can be really powerful. So if I flame barrier, the bird will actually just murder itself against me. I definitely should have used the whirlwind in there as well, by the way. Bird goes down. Backliner takes the hit. All right, we'll take a Havoc here because we have enough high-impact cards in the deck now. Still think we should probably rest here. Okay, so now I'm looking for my vulnerability first. That Havoc will just burn a defend from the deck. I'm actually kind of a fi uh, oh fine with that. Ooh, oh fine. Uh, there is an Immolate left in the deck. I should hit that with my double damage. So that means that instead of playing the Bludgeon this turn, I just play the Whirlwind. I don't need another Immolate. I'll have too many burns in the deck if I put another Immolate in here. But here's the first Immolate. Just kills two targets for me. Easy. Havoc first. And murder. Okay. None of these are good for the deck. There's the extra energy in Sozu. <laughs> Have to take it. Have to take it. Okay. Three elites on the left-hand side. Three elites on the right-hand side as well. Three question marks. No rests, except there's a late shop on the right. There's two mid lane rests. Actually, there is one. No, there is no rests. Uh, super late rest. Never mind. All right, we will go with this path. No, flame barrier... Bludgeon murder the back line. Then immolate and whirlwind for the kill, as well as set up my next pen nib. Regal pillow. Whenever you rest, heal an additional 15 HP. That could actually end up being useful for us. 16 by 5 is what? 30, 80? I'm offering whirlwind. Uh, definitely none of those. 
Yep, more than happy to take this fight. Got another couple immolates in this deck. We'll be fine. So we'll immolate, immolate. I'll bludgeon to murder the frontliner, then weaken the backliner, and then we've got the kill. I'm not going to put anything in the deck. I know that I've got some pretty good cards left in that. I thought I still had a bludgeon, which is what I was saying. I know that I've got, but... Yeah, okay, so I didn't know. That's fine. I lost track of my bludgeons. That's fine, too. I think. Hopefully. Hey, it turns out to be fine. Calipers. At the start of your turn, lose 15 block rather than all of it. That's really never going to be viable or active or anything for us. Uh, Thunderclap is actually a little interesting. It is a very, very cheap setup of vulnerability, and that's the only reason I'm taking it here. With four energy in a single turn, outside of this turn, I mean, obviously, uh, it's enough to set up just before I drop a Immolate on my enemies. Right, Nemesis, so I'm looking basically here for the turn one kill if I can get it. It's a very small amplification to use that thunder there, so I'll do it in this order. 12 by 6, it's not really enough, is it? That's a bad draw right there. Alright, I'm gonna play safe. I set the enemy up with a bunch of debuffs here so that if they do do their multi-attack, which they do, should be still pretty okay. I'm pretty unlikely to deal 11 damage in a single turn here. That is to say, through intangibility. Yeah, that's a problem. So now I just get to take a huge hit. It's really lame. Uh, bronze scale. Start each combat with three thorns as well as another power through. The problem is with the power through and the two immolates in the deck, my deck just becomes statuses soon. But it's so effective by itself. Pre-upgraded. You know what? I'll take it. So now I'm starting to think, okay, how do I win against the heart? I... It, this this deck doesn't. It doesn't even have Snack Eye, which is the last situation I was in with this kind of a deck, talking about whether or not I could fight the heart. This doesn't even have Snack Eye on its side, so... There's nothing here. Evolve. Hell yes. Whenever you draw a status card, draw two cards. Mm-hmm. That's the start of it. Now I need either... Let's think about the different options we could add in here. Good pick up. Good pick up. Now I need either medical kit or... I really don't know. I don't know what could do this for me. Time Eater will probably kill. Okay. Having the Whirlwind for a bunch of damage, but I don't spend any of my own energy on it. Fancy little trick that. If you use a Havoc on an X cost card, it will play it for the X cost, but not cost you X. Oh, now you taunt me with a drop kick. Peace pipe. You can now remove cards from your deck at rest sites. No, I don't want any of those. And can't take the final one because it's Sozu. 
Red Skull, where your HP is at a below 50%, you have three additional strength. This is a really rough fight. Like, this fight could easily be an elite fight. It has been nerfed recently, but... Oh, no. Still feels bad. Good thing I've got giant cards. They can really help you in this fight. Because if you play a lot of small attacks, uh, that's the thing that that fight really harms you for doing. But we don't, thankfully. Okay, I'm going to... Warcry, the Whirlwind back atop the deck, and get a bunch of damage for free. This damage ain't free. Karen's Ashes. Whenever you exhaust a card, deal three damage to all enemies, as well as another shrug it off. We're adding a little bit of defense into the deck at this point. Uh, put four random attacks from your draw pile into your hand. Yeah, that's not going to help us. Uh, at the start of each combat, draw two additional cards. Sure, we'll take that, we'll take a shrug it off, and then we'll remove a defend. We're kind of just mega upgrading the defense at this point. Well, mega upgrading the defense. Sure, we'll just remove them. Got him. Another Havoc? Exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand. Gain seven block for each card exhausted. Yeah, in the boss fight, that actually probably will be important. We'll probably be fighting for long enough for that to be relevant. Now, unfortunately, I know that basically the rest of my deck is just aggression here. I have calipers, so if I take corruption, I can kind of just stack defense and then rely on that defense for a while. Sure, I'll take it. Let's do it. Havoc plays Warcry. The second win back atop the deck there, I think. So I get to play all of the cards. Uh, Juggernaut? No. We're going to burn all of the effects out of our deck really quickly, so Juggernaut isn't going to be super important. Corruption. Shrug, shrug. Shrug. Defends. And then we'll burn that burn. Cool. Ooh, impervious. Okay, so I can only play two uh, uh, cards next turn. It should definitely be, like, Flame Barrier Whirlwind here. I'll take a barricade, sure. It'll help me keep all of the block from the plated armor, whereas so far we can't do that. Nice. Not going to play another card here. Entrench, sure. So we've just turned this into an entrench barricade deck on the fly. Weird how that uh, weird how that happens. But all right, go off, I guess. Seriously, go off.
We're going to be relying on that Nilri's Codex to pull us through on the final floor. Clearly. All right. Well, that's the time eater down. No real problems there. 1305. All right. That's some good damage. Not going to have enough money to really do anything on this floor, though. There's no good options to smear, so yeah, we just remove another defense. Yeah, there's nothing here I can really do. I'll just take the pre-upgraded Warcry. Again, remember, no potions for me. Sozu. Sozu says no potions. Okay, I'm going to offering first. I will fail a draw here, but you'll see what I'm doing in a second. Then I'll Warcry just to put the Whirlwind back on top of the deck, and then we have it. Wow, what a bunch of free damage that we just got. Second wind power through. I very rarely use those, and I just happen to be using them in the same run here. Wild. I use those so rarely, it would be fair to think that I don't like them. It's just not my play style. Vajra started combat with one strength? Yeah, all right. Uh, we have so little strength that a Reaper doesn't really make sense here. Heals us up a little bit. Maximum it heals us for 10. It's not good enough. Oh, plus vulnerability, 15. Still not good enough. Okay. We'll actually start out with the Thunderclap here. Ring. I mean, I should just keep the vulnerability and weakness up here. Sure, I intend to exhaust a lot of cards in this deck, so we'll take the field no pain. Don't make me frail. Look it off. Evolve. So I did that in that order specifically because I wanted to be defended for the first hit. But if I did it in the other order, I would have drawn two more cards this turn. Wow. I'm actually not even going to use the seeing red here. I don't need to. I will, however, use the incrementing pen nib there. Another shrug it off, sure. I'm going to leave the Warcry and the Havoc. No, I'll play the Havoc. Oh, I just burns a wound. Nice. If only we had uh, Flame Barrier that hand. Would have been real nice. Oh, look, it's Flame Barrier, this hand. I'm going to play another power through. It'll keep some block from the calipers. Double tap here as well. That's 60 incoming damage already. If I double tap the clothesline, I still don't even weaken this turn, so that's a little bit weak source. I'm gonna put that wound back atop the deck. Now I'm gonna redraw it. It'll redraw us two extra cards. Okay, so if I thunderclap, then seeing red double tap the clothesline, I can 
can actually weaken the enemy here. We'll have it to burn a shrug it off. And then shrug it off to fully defend. This heals us for seven, so we may as well do it now. There's no reason not to. Oh, look, Flame Barrier constantly turning up with the wrong hand. Good to see you, Yid. Using Fiend Fire to burn out this entire hand is just really wasteful. Bludgeon is a lot of my damage. It's just I never get to play it. Worst hands to burn out. I'm going to play the power through so that I get to keep it. Play the shrug it off so that I get to keep that as well. And then burn the entire hand. Flame Barrier is turning up in the wrong turn because of course it is. We take Corruption. We always said we would. Corruption. Shrug. 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 Flame Barrier. Havoc that through. That plays a bludgeon. Well, second wind. We almost managed to full defend that turn despite having just nothing. Uh, I'll take the offering here rather than the fiend fire because if I burn out every card in my deck, I'm going to find it real difficult to win. This deck is going to exclusively win based off of the fact that we can use Nilri's Codex to fish for more win conditions. That's, that's just wild. By heart. Good lord. Wow. Again, did not think that that was going to happen, but I should not have completely counted short Nilri's Codex. I did say at one point that we would need very lucky fishes. Uh, I think I may have said Nilri's Codex, but I was talking about fishing in that context. What cards we'd fish for from Nilri's Codex. But. It happens. So I can hardly be sad about it. I should have had a little bit more faith than it possibly could have. I mean, every single time that I've said, well, we're not going to be able to kill the heart with this build, I should have had a little bit more faith, except for the ones where it didn't work. Because there, I had the right amount. For the moment, my name is Vin Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you... next time.